I'm Bob Sudeiko in Cassiar in northern British Columbia. Three days from now, the most important decision in the history of this mine will be made in an office in Vancouver. A decision to go underground or to completely close the mine by 1991. If it's a decision to go underground, then the mine will have a new lease on life. If the decision goes the other way, it'll mean the end of Cassiar, British Columbia. Cassiar has been around since 1952, and it's changed a lot over those years. It used to be a rough-and-tumble transient town with a turnover rate of 100%. Now that's down to 15%, a good record for a mining town. In fact, Cassiar has grown into a community that people are proud of. Families have been raised here, and many employees have over 20 years of service. Ties have always been close to the Yukon, with Watson Lake the main link to the outside. This is one of the oldest mining operations in British Columbia. For nearly 35 years, high-quality asbestos fiber has been processed at this mill. The ore comes from an open pit five kilometers away at the top of the mountain. Both management and workers have known for some time that these ore reserves would run out by 1991. That could mean closure for any other mine, but Cassiar has another card to play. It's called the McDame Deposit. It was discovered in 1978. Located on the side of the mountain below the open pit, it's actually three kilometers closer to the mill site than the original ore body. The McDame ore would have to be mined in a different way. It means going underground, tunneling right into the side of the mountain. It's a $35 million decision. A decision mine manager Bill Zemanchik says would give Cassiar a new future. It'll extend a life significantly uh, as we the reserves proven reserves underground right now are about 12 years and there are as the geologists say there are still possible and probable possibilities beyond that a major hurdle against going underground has already been overcome a few weeks ago union and management signed a three-year contract to ensure labor stability they have the same concerns as the company has in many areas uh, areas such as contracting out technological change and hours of work so because of the complexity of, of underground none of us have any experience of underground so we have put some pretty loose language together to cover those items Betty Cavanaugh is president of the United Steelworkers office and technical local and I feel that we negotiated a good contract and it's in favor of both the company and the union and as far as the union's concerned um, where we're coming from, there should be nothing to hold proceeding underground from a union point of view. David Little heads up the steelworkers' production and maintenance local. The go-ahead's going to come on, on December the 10th. It was a negotiating tool with the company that, uh, you know, they had to get something in place, and this is part of the feasibility study, and, uh, um, but I think the underground's a go. It's just a matter of uh, um, them making the, the uh, decision. Uh, but they needed that contract in place in order to get that. Over the last few years, relations between union and management have been confrontational. The signing of this new contract has changed that. Both sides have pulled together towards a common goal, keeping the mine open. The switch from open pit to underground will mean a major change in mining operations, and that's a problem. The union says it's a technological change, new equipment, new skills, different safety concerns, and working conditions. Management disagrees. It's a decision that will be made by binding arbitration. It will also affect how many of the present miners will remain. But if we do get the technological change question answered in our favor, we think that quite a few of the people will take the option of being having their severance pay given to them. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people that want to go to work in that underground operation. It's, it takes a special type of person to work in there, and. Uh, you definitely can't force anybody to work in there, so uh, we feel that there's going to be quite a few people that'll, that'll leave. For miners that choose to stay, underground training programs will be offered. Bill Zemanchek. We're looking at it from the point of view that we'll have contractors initially developing things and also even mining the ore to, to start with. Now, as they start mining the ore, we'll have our people working with them as, to learn the skills. And then as they develop the skills, then the contractors will be let go and our people will take over. 
Going underground is the biggest decision the company will have to make. But tough choices are not new. It's had to make them in the past to stay competitive. When production dropped, streamlining of the mine saw the payroll go from over 600 employees to 300. An example of that is modernizing the mill. A few years ago, it used to require two people at each of these bag filling stations. Today, one person oversees all of them. The cost of power is high. These diesel generators supply the mine and the town with electricity. All the fuel has to be trucked in, 12 million liters a year at a cost of $3 million. Cassiar is one of the largest users of fuel in Western Canada. Underground mining will mean additional operating costs. It will be more expensive to extract the ore. And while other asbestos mines enjoy subsidies from federal or provincial governments, the Cassiar mine has had to go it alone. Even the union feels it's unfair. The only reason Cassiar is still in the market right now is they have the best fiber in the world, and that, uh, and, and that keeps them on top of it, but that's the only thing that helps. If they have, had some help from the government, it would sure take, off the, uh, it would, it would sure take the load off the company's shoulders. Everyone in Cassiar is pulling together and hoping for good news. But there's no getting around the seriousness of the situation. In a couple of days, employees will be told if this mine has a future. While everyone is optimistic, they all realize what a decision not to go underground will mean. Then we go back in June and renegotiate, which is when the collective agreements expire, and we renegotiate a complete new agreement. And that agreement will be based towards a complete new objective. And that'll be towards the shutdown. In about 1991? That's exactly. Right. And what would happen to the town? It'll probably end up being cleaned right out. No one is looking forward to any such scenario. We're looking at it in a positive light towards the McDame proceeding. And this company being in place and the town being in place for many, many more years.